Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. The Saints will be without Alvin Kamara for the first three games of the year, but because of Kendry Miller, that won't be a problem. The Steelers look ready for the season, and the Seahawks got plenty of explosive plays from their rookies. I'm Kainani Stevens, in for Peter Bukowski, and you're Locked On Sports Today. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're Locked On Sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. The New Orleans Saints took on the Los Angeles Chargers for their second opportunity to tune up before the beginning of the regular season. Locked on Saints host Ross Jackson dives into the big takeaway from the Saints second preseason game. Kendra Miller just let the entire world know that every single one of those questions and doubts and all the things that there were around him and all of those things that everybody was concerned about around him. He let them all know you ain't got to be worried about us. We gonna be all right, as Kendrick Lamar would say, and I think that's what Kendra Miller was walking, Kendra Lamar, if you will, was walking off saying today, because he made one of the most Alvin Kamara-like catches today in this preseason game down that left sideline. I see the comment from Bionics. Kendra is him. I love it. Uh, Yes, going right down that left sideline, being able to get that pass, which by the way was delivered beautifully by Jameis Winston down that left sideline, making the contested catch, looking it in over his shoulder. Remember, this is a guy that caught like 28, 30 passes during his career his entire career at TCU. And that was one of the biggest question marks around him was, is he going to be able to catch the football the way that he needs to, to be able to operate within a New Orleans Saints offense? Well, there's your answer. Clearly, he absolutely can. And what does he do? The very, very next play runs it right up the middle through and into the end zone as well. A touchdown that he absolutely deserved to be given. So I love that they gave him that play call right off the bat. But when you look at having you know, uh, 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 an Alvin Kamara that's not going to be, you know, a part of your team for the opening three games of the season because he's going to be serving that suspension. You've got Jamal Williams back there, but who's going to be the change of pace back that can give you a little bit of everything, that can catch passes, that can get outside, that can run between the tackles, that can be tough, that can be that one cut back that has the breakaway speed to be able to hit the home runs as well. Kendra Miller, Kendra Miller, Kendra Miller, Kendra Miller. And if you haven't had the answer before, I think you got it today against the Los Angeles Chargers. That big catch down that left sideline was more than just a good play. That was a statement by Kendra Miller to let everybody know, say it with me, we going to be all right. That's what he's telling everybody about the New Orleans Saints. So I love that. I love Love that play for him. That's a big confidence builder for him, too. That's a huge confidence builder for everybody that maybe had those question marks. Big confidence builder for the coaches that are looking at him and that know. Like, I spoke with Joel Thomas, the New Orleans Saints running back coach, months ago, and I asked him a little bit about if they're concerned about Kendra Miller being able to translate to the NFL as a pass catcher, just as a pass catcher. And what he told me was that they're not worried about that at all. They can see it on film. They can see that he's able to do it. Now they just want him to do it more and do it consistently. Maybe add some of the subtleties to his route running, expand his route diversity, those things. But the big thing that they mentioned to me, and this is the thing I want you to remember, Mark Ingram was not a pass catcher when he showed up in New Orleans when he was drafted from the Alabama Crimson Tide. Latavius Murray was not a noted pass catcher when he showed up here in New Orleans after spending years with multiple teams, including, of course, the Vikings and the Raiders. But what did they do when they were here? Them boys caught passes. They caught them some good passes. We also saw Kendra Miller do something that both of those guys did really well in this New Orleans Saints system as well, which was pick up those blitzes coming from up the middle, around the edge, whatever it might be. So I'm really, really happy with the performance that we saw from Kendra Miller today. Stay up to date all year long with the New Orleans Saints by subscribing to Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Saints on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen coming up. The Pittsburgh Steelers felt good about their performance in game two of the preseason. Before we get to that, though, Joe Mixon is retaliating against some media outlets. 
Football season is about to kick off, and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time that that team wins in the regular season. So just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. You can use your bonus bets on point spreads, player props, over-unders, whatever you want. You could sign up, place a bet on the Jets to win it all, and then get paid for every win that they accumulate in the regular season before the Super Bowl even happens. You can also jump in on some NFL division futures. The favorites to win the NFC East are still the Philadelphia Eagles, but they're not as heavily favored to repeat like some other division champs are. So FanDuel has the Eagles odds to win the division at minus 115, but the Cowboys are hot on their heels with odds of plus 175. So you can also combine prop bets within a game to make a same game parlay for even bigger payouts. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. After Joe Mixon was found not guilty of aggravated menacing, he declined to speak with reporters after his first practice back with the Bengals. He then announced he would be boycotting questions from specific reporters who represent the following outlets. Sports Illustrated, the Cincinnati Inquirer, Pro Football Network, and ESPN. Mixon cited disrespectful behavior, and when pressed for how it was disrespectful, he said simply, quote, you know how. Mixon has not spoken to reporters during the team's scheduled media access since the end of the 2022 season. The seventh year player out of Oklahoma has been mired with off field issues in 2023. In April, Mixon was charged with misdemeanor aggravated menacing after police claim he pointed a gun at a woman and said he should shoot her. Last week, Hamilton County Municipal Court Judge Gwen Bender ruled Mixon not guilty, saying city prosecutors failed to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. Team USA completed a 5-0 exhibition record with a high-intensity 99-91 win over medal contender Germany on Sunday. The U.S. trailed by as many as 16 points in the second half as Germany, which came into the game at 4-1, employed an effective game plan. But the Americans turned it into a chance to buckle down and show off what they can do on defense, holding Germany scoreless for six minutes in the fourth quarter while going on an 18-0 run. Anthony Edwards specifically stood out. He fired up 34 points on a 11 of 20 shooting and was part of the swarming defensive effort that won the game. His potential as a leading man continuing to show through. On the diamond, the Yankees continue their total free fall. This is Stacey Gotsoulias of Locked On Yankees, and the Yankees did something they haven't done since 1995, and that is lose eight games in a row. At least that losing streak was on the road during a 13 game road trip that started in Boston and ended in Seattle. That streak ended in Seattle. This streak began in Miami, continued through Atlanta, and now has made it home to Yankee Stadium where the Yankees lost three in a row to the Red Sox to get swept. And now they've lost eight of nine to the Red Sox. The disaster of a season continues for the New York Yankees. What isn't a disaster? The Miners. And we talk about it because it's Miners Monday. Somerset had a good week. Hudson Valley had a good week. Scranton had a good week. Tampa had a good week. And we couldn't even get to them because there was too much to talk about with Somerset, Scranton, and Hudson Valley. So there are some positives when it comes to the Yankees. Unfortunately, it's not in the Bronx. What are you going to do? It's just that kind of a year. And the Brewers swept the Rangers in Arlington. Never would I have guessed at the Brewers after playing so poorly and getting swept in Los Angeles that they'd go on to Texas, a legitimate World Series contender, and sweep this three-game series. Chuck Freeman, locked on Brewers, will be dropping the episode a little bit later on. But, I mean, they put it all together. Pitching, hitting. I mean, this is the kind of team that I would enjoy watching every day. Timely hitting, getting clutch hits, and of course the pitching is always there for the Milwaukee Brewers. Going into Texas and eliminating that three-game sweep against Los Angeles by coming back and taking three of Texas, okay? So they go three and three on that part of the road trip, six and three on the nine-gamer. That's amazing. Coming back home on Tuesday, taking on Twins in the first of three. But, man, how about that? Going into Texas and playing, I think, the most complete series of the season for the Milwaukee Brewers. We'll talk to you a little bit later on on Lockdown Brewers. The Pittsburgh Steelers need Kenny Pickett to take a big step forward in his second NFL season. They saw some impressive stuff in their second preseason game. Locked on Steelers host Chris Carter gives us the details. 
this offense is explosive again. And it's been a while since the Steelers offense has been explosive. When I say explosive, I mean being able to, to hit for big plays. This offense has scored from the first team offense. They've had three drives in the preseason. They've scored from 33 yards out. They've scored from 62 yards out. And they've scored from 25 yards out. Two of those were Kenny Pickett touchdown passes. One of those was a Jalen Warren 62-yard run. And to me, I think once this happens, stands twice as coincidence, three times means you got something there. And if you want to throw out the first one against the Buccaneers because that was their backups, fine. But this is a Bills defense that whooped the Steelers up and down the field last year. A Bills team that whooped the Steelers up and down the field last year. And again, just first team to first team, the Steelers dominated. And small sample size, sure, all that. But the sm- even if you took a small sample size of that Bills Steelers game last year, the Bills owned them. And it was the complete flip side of that in this game. And one of the things that really, really about Kenny Pickett being sharp and doing what he did was how well he processed the field. And I don't think there's enough talk about that. I think everyone's just excited to see the big plays. But listen to him talk in the post game. I wasn't able to get him at the podium because I was in the Steelers locker room and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm only one guy. But listen to him talking about how we were ready for the cover two looks. We were le- ready for what they were trying to show us. And Kenny Pickett finished the game going three for four for four to three yards and a touchdown. But his first two completions before the Pat Fryermuth touchdown were both plays where the Bills disguised the coverage and he didn't even blink. The first play was a quick pass to the outside to George Pickens. The Bills showed cover two, switched to cover one. And immediately, uh, Kenny Pickett knew, oh, well, that's one-on-one coverage on the outside. (laughs) George has got that. He don't got to worry about a zone underneath, like, you know, waiting for the pass. Quick read, easy catch, easy, easy first down. They move the chains. Then on third down, they do the reverse. They show cover one, man press all over. One high safety, everyone up on their wide receivers. Then on the snap of the ball, one of the one of the safeties dr- comes from out of the box, go, go, goes deep, and then it's cover two, and it's a zone. And so now Kenny Pickett, if he panics, the you know this that's going to ruin the momentum, and they're probably going to have to punt on this play. He doesn't panic. He doesn't even flinch. He waits for Allen Robinson to set up in his route, hits him in the perfect spot. They move the chains over the middle, well executed, well timed, seamless. Didn't look like it even phased him. And when I tell you that, if you go back, go back and look at the Steelers Bills tape, and which may not be something you want to do from 2022 because it was such a bad game for the Steelers. But go back and look at the All 22 and look at how Kenny Pickett would think in the moment when this when the Bills did that, or or other teams early on in the season because a lot of teams they were doing that. They'd show one defense flip to another. They show this defense flip to this defense, and later in the season, Kenny Pickett got better at understanding at least how, like not to freeze up and to actually have a better reaction to it. But back to, in the early part of that season, I mean, it was it was a kryptonite for him, and now it, it's like it does. It's not. Even, it didn't even exist in this game. He was ready for it the whole time, and then. On his touchdown pass to Pat Fryermuth, it was perfect in all aspects. He identified the cover two defense, zone, by the way. Recognized, oh, I got Pat Fryermuth on a linebacker. And then throws it to a point where the linebacker can't even touch it. It's back shoulder to Pat Fryermuth's seam right in between the two safeties. And throwing it away that allows Pat Fryermuth to kind of keep his momentum building to get to the goal line. So when he gets hit, he just... His momentum carries him into the end zone. Touchdown. Great read. Great throw. Great play. And I'll even say, Pat, I mean, it was, wasn't was terrible coverage by the linebacker. He at least closed the gap. He forced Kenny Pickett to be accurate. It's just that Kenny Pickett was. And he threw Pat Frymuth open in that situation. I think it speaks a lot to where this offense could go this year if he can hit throws like that. And it's just like the Pickens touchdown. Surveying the field against the Buccaneers looking one way, looking, you know, looking off the safety here to go over here and hit your guy over the middle. That's two, two, two deep touchdown passes down the middle part of the field, which people said was impossible to do with Matt Canada as the offensive coordinator. Kenny Pickett's getting sharper and he's throwing his guys open. Stay up to date all year long on the Pittsburgh Steelers by subscribing to Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Steelers on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. 
Coming up, the Seahawks handled another preseason test as they ready themselves for a wide open NFC. Smith is out to prove that last year was no fluke. How are the Seahawks getting ready to seize the opportunity in the NFC? Locked on Seahawks host Corbin Smith tells us how. For a second straight week, the Seahawks were victorious in preseason play at Lumen Field, a 24 to 14 victory over the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys did not play very many of their starters, but the Seahawks certainly did. Geno Smith getting a few drives in today's game. The offensive line, the entire projected starting offensive line playing in the first quarter of this football game as well. Defense, not quite as many starters playing for the Seahawks, but the stars the show, as expected, were the rookies, both drafted and undrafted variety, getting a bunch of explosive plays on the offensive side of the football. And it all started on the second drive of the game when Geno Smith was still in there. The Seahawks had back-to-back 28-plus -back yard plays. Smith hitting Jake Boba, who again showed off his fancy ability at the line of scrimmage to win with his release ends up getting outside separation 28 yard reception he did fumble at the end of the play but thankfully he recovered it and then the very next play Zach Charbonnet the first explosive run that we've seen from the second round pick out of UCLA he gets downhill and then shoots his way outside and turns that into a 29 yard run that vaulted him deep into Cowboys territory a sack on Geno Smith almost disrupted that scoring drive but Jason Myers Myers connects from 57 yards out. And then once Drew Locke checked into the game, the explosive plays continued. He came out with the gun out of his holster, ready to fire, and he was throwing the ball downfield. Jackson Smith and Jigba with his longest reception so far as a Seahawk, a 48-yard catch, or he almost was Willie Mays-esque, letting the ball get into his hands late, late showing of his hands dropped in the bucket by Locke and then nearly gets into the end zone. He's tackled at the one yard line. Sir Roderick Thompson Jr. also had a 29 yard run. He could have had two of them in this game, but one of them was called back for a second straight preseason game due to a holding penalty. So the rookie out of Texas Tech continues to be impressive with the limited opportunity that he is getting out there as well. So that was really the tale of this game for the Seahawks. They were behind seven to three at the end of the first quarter. And then the offense was a able to find traction once Drew Locke was entering into the lineup and these rookies really started to pitch in. But you got those two 20-plus yard plays in the last drive that Geno Smith was out there. And then Drew Locke averaging almost 20 yards per attempt in this game. Big reason why is those rookies contributing with big plays. They were able to get the run game going in the second half as well. And so that was the exciting development of this game. And it wasn't just about the rookies on the offensive side of the ball either. Tyjon Lindsay, undrafted rookie receiver, had a 34-yard punt return in the second half of this game. And John Hall, one of their backup receivers, another undrafted rookie, he blocked a punt. So there were explosive plays on all three sides of the football this game. A ton of them on offense to fuel a second quarter surge that had the Seahawks going into the half up 17-7. to And on special teams, they were able to get those big plays from John Hall as well as Tyjon Lindsay on defense. Several rookies contributed in this contest, getting after the quarterback, stuffing the run. So really, it was a big play fest. And that was the exciting, exciting thing to watch. Pete Carroll was talking about it after the game, being able to see the passing game come together we didn't get to see very much Geno Smith, but he looked poised. He looked composed. He looked like he was ready for week one to be here. And five for six, 46 yards, not an overly impressive stat line, but still he was throwing the football well. You could see the arm talent able to connect on that big play to Jake Bobo. You see the same thing with Drew Locke, who is showing growth every single time he goes out on the field. He was talking about this after the game. He feels like he is in complete command of this offense, and it's helped with his decision-making. Every time he's going on the field, he thinks he can lead the Seahawks right down the field for points, and every quarterback wants to feel that way. So you can just see the amount of talent that the Seahawks have in their skill positions and at the quarterback spot right now. Stay up to date all year long on the Seattle Seahawks. You can subscribe to Locked on Sports Today and Locked on Seahawks on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. 
And finally, the NBA has launched an inquiry into the circumstances surrounding Philadelphia 76er star James Harden's public admonishment of the franchise's president of basketball operations, Daryl Morey. The league's office is believed to be pursuing an understanding of whether Harden was portending a 2023-2024 holdout in violation of the league's collective bargaining agreement, or he had been referencing past contract discussions with the organization that might constitute salary cap circumvention according to a report. All of this and Harden maintains that he will report to training camp in September if he still is not traded, but could be another awkward camp for Philly. Thank you for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Now go find your favorite team's podcast and make that your second listen. Coming up tomorrow, how do the commanders look with newly minted starter Sam Howell? So at least until tomorrow, stay Locked On Sports today. Locked On Podcast Network presents... Locked On Sports Today. For more episodes of Locked On Sports Today, go to our video on demand. Click on sports at the top of your screen. There you'll find past episodes of Locked On Sports Today, plus other Locked On shows on demand.